Hi everyone, it's Chelsea with the Mount Holly Library, and today it is time for another teen book talk, and this month we are talking about graphic novels. So I have about five graphic novels that we're going to talk about today, and then at the end I'll have a couple other ones just sort of run across the screen because I feel like they just deserved an honorable mention. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first one that we have is No Ivy League by Hazel Newellvont. And this book was published in August of 2019 and has a Goodreads rating of 3.17 out of 5. So when Hazel was about 17, she takes on a summer job clearing ivy from the forest in her hometown of Portland, Oregon. Her only expectation is just to earn a little bit of money. She's homeschooled and slightly sheltered. Hazel soon finds that her job is working side by side with at-risk teens to sort of be an initiation into a world that she has no skill really in navigating. So it's an uncomfortable and compelling memoir about an important story of the girl's awakening to her white privilege and the hidden story of segregation in Portland. I will say while I did read this book and I did like it, I do feel like it sort of skims the surface, almost as though this book tried to take on a lot of different heavy topics it really didn't go very deep into any of them. Again, it was a very nice quick read, but I wish that it would have dug a little bit deeper into the topics that it was trying to portray. All right, so next we have Gotham High by Melissa de la Cruz. This book was published in April 2020 and has a rating of 3.20 out of 5 on Goodreads. So before they became Batman, Catwoman, and the Joker, Bruce, Selina, and Jack were high schoolers who would do whatever it took, even destroy the ones they loved to satisfy their own motives. So after being kicked out of boarding school, 16-year-old Bruce Wayne returns to Gotham City to find that nothing is as he left it. What once was his family home is now just an empty husk of his home. It's lonely and it's sort of just haunted by the memory of his parents. And then you have Selena Kyle, who is once was the innocent girl next door. She now rules over Gotham High School and then she's aided by the class clown, which is Jack. So when a kidnapping rattles the school, Bruce has to seek answers as the dark and troubled night and see if he can save the day. So that is just a really interesting take on what we all know as, you know, the Batman universe um, and those characters. So next we have The Oracle Code by Mariko Nykamp. This book was published in March of 2020, and it has a 3.86 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. So this is about Barbara Gordon um, and Arkham City. So again, you're back in the Batman universe. So after a gunshot leaves her paralyzed, Barbara Gordon enters the Arkham Center of Independence, where Gotham teens undergo physical and mental rehabilitation. She um, now has to use a wheelchair, and she has to adapt to a new normal but she can't shake the feeling that something is amiss. So within these walls, there are strange sounds at night, patients go missing, and she tries to put the pieces together of what she believes to be a larger puzzle. So fellow patients um, at the center try to connect with Barbara, but she pushes them away, and she'd rather just try to spend time with ghost stories to participate in her daily exercises. So in the Oracle Code, there's universal truths that cannot be escaped, and Barbara must battle the phantoms of her past before they swarm her future. So again, you're right back in that um, Batman universe, just with a sort of a different spin on it, just different characters. So next we have The Dark Matter of Mona Starr by Laura Lee Gulledge. This was published in April 2020 and has a rating of 4.07 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. So this character, Mona Starr, um, she has a little bit of depression. The world is too much for her. So she's really sweet and geeky and creative, but it's hard for her to make friends and connect with other people. She knows that she has depression and she calls it her matter. And so the matter gets everywhere. It tells Mona that she's not good enough, that everyone around her wishes she would go away. But she does therapy art and she writes. And with the persistence of a few good friends, she starts to understand her matter and how she and maybe other readers can turn their fears into strengths. So it's really heartfelt and emotionally vulnerable. And the graphics in it are very pretty. It was probably one of my favorite things about this book. The Dark Matter of Monastar is a story that takes the inner life of a teenager seriously. And it sort of gives readers a new way to look at a 
universal quest for meaning and connection while dealing with depression. So I really enjoyed it. I do recommend that one. So next we have Glass Town, The Imaginary World of the Brontes by Isabel Greenberg. This was published in March 2020 and has a rating of 4.09 out of 5 on Goodreads. So this graphic novel is about the Bronte sisters and the strange and marvelous imaginary world that they invented during their childhood. So the story begins in 1825 with the deaths of Maria and Elizabeth, who were the oldest siblings. And it is in response to this loss that the four remaining Bronte children set pen to paper and they create this fictional world that becomes known as the Glass Town. This world and its characters um, would come to be the Bronte's escape from realities of their life. And within Glass Town, the siblings could experience love and friendship, war and triumph and heartbreak. It's just a different take on classic characters from those classic stories that have just been around for so long and just sort of reimagining them and just bringing them to modern day. So again, um, beautiful art. It's a really good story. So next we have Dragon Hoops by Jean Yang. This was published in March 2020 and has a rating of 4.51 out of 5 on Goodreads. So this character is actually about Jean. Jean understands stories, comic book stories in particular. He likes big action, big thrills, and where the hero always wins. But Jean doesn't get sports. As a kid, his friends would call him Stick, and every basketball game just ended up in pain. So he lost interest in basketball a long time ago. But now he is at the high school where he teaches. Basketball is all anyone ever talks about. So the men's varsity team, the Dragons, is having a phenomenal season that's been decades in the making. Each victory is bringing them closer to their ultimate goal, which is the championships. And once Gene gets to know these young all-stars, he realizes that their stories are just as thrilling as anything he's ever seen on a comic book page. And he knows he has to follow this epic to its end. What he doesn't know yet is that this season is not only going to change the Dragons' lives, but his own life as well. So this graphic novel has a great rating and a lot of really good reviews, and it is one of the most popular ones that we have as a new graphic novel. I will say, though, this book is over 400 pages, which, in my opinion, is not very common for a lot of graphic novels these days. Um, I still think it's a really good book, and I definitely recommend it. There's been just people raving all about it. Um, if you're into sports, this is also another reason to give it a go. So definitely try it out and see how it works for you. All right, so I'm just going to let a few more just sort of pop up and play. If you want to take a look at them and check them out, um, you can always just shoot an email, call the library, see if you can get one on reserve for you. I hope you all are doing great, and we will see you soon. Bye.